All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to remind you of how to do parametric equations because it's a very important tool, not only in life, but also for what's called line integrals or line integrals or vector fields, which will be part of a future video, which also is linked in the description. So first of all, maybe the most important parametrization, uh, parametrize the circle centered at two zero, sorry, uh, not two zero, two three, And I was very clever, two, three, four. So all n radius four. Four and I'm not writing this, but I'm assuming it's in the counterclockwise direction. So unless stated otherwise, I assume it's counterclockwise, unless again, I'm evil and I say it's clockwise. So just to remind you, so let's draw this circle, two, three, four. So 2, 3, n radius 4, nice big and round circle. Now, and the idea is you want to write this in terms of x and y, but here where x and y are functions of t. So in this case, the best interpretation is with an angle. So given an angle t, where are we on this circle? And the way to do this is as follows. You see the center is at 2, 3. So we start at 2 and at 3. That's sort of the initial center. And what it's saying essentially we start, you know, assuming we have the circle centered at 0, 0, we're just translating it to a center 2 and 3. And then the rest is just polar coordinates. So assume the circle is 0, 0, then to find x and y, you just use polar coordinates. So x would be 4 cosine t, and y would be 4 sine of t. Just like so katoa. So 4 cosine t, and then 4 sine t. And t is the angle, again, it goes the whole revolution between 0 and 2 pi. This is again how we can write the circle in terms of one variable, which makes sense because the circle is a one-dimensional object. So again, just to clarify, we start at 2, 3, because the center is at 2, 3, and then you're just adding polar coordinates. So 4 cosine of t and 4 sine of t. That's the one, maybe again, the most prominent example of a parametrization. The next one also occurs a lot, which is the line. Okay, so let's parametrize a line segment. Two, same, but the line segment. From one, two, two, three, four. What you're doing is you're starting at the point 1, 2, and you go all the way up to the point 3, 4. Whoosh. There we go. And again, we want to write this in terms of x and t and y of t. So x of t will be something, and then y of t will be something. How do we do this? Again, initially what you want, you want to start, again, with t equals 0. Initially, you want to be at the point 1, 2. And finally, so at the end, you want to be at the point 3, 4. So the idea is as follows. Because you're starting at 1, 2, you definitely want something times 1 plus something times 2. Because you're ending at 3, 4, you want something at 3 plus something times 4. Now, here's a little trick, and again, it's always tricky to remember which is which, but basically think of it as an on and off switch. 
What you want at zero, zero, you want one and two. So ideally what you'd like is one times one, two. So one times one and one times two plus zero times three and zero times four. So you want something that at zero is zero and at one it is one. So this, for instance, suggests to use t. Because it is precisely zero at zero. On the other hand, you want, again, the opposite at one. So you want x of one and y of one to be three and four, which is precisely zero times one and zero, sorry, zero times two plus one times three and one times four. So now you want something that is zero at one. So how about we use one minus t? And by the way, one minus t and not t minus one because t minus one is negative. We want something positive, and in fact, that is the correct parametrization. Something times one and two, and something times three and four. To have an on and off switch, we have a t here, and a one minus t here. So definitely you will like, debate between t and one minus t. The good news is you can actually easily check your answer, because all you need to do, plug in t equals zero, and you'll see at zero, this becomes one and this becomes zero. So in the end, we get one here and we get two here, which gives you precisely the point you want. If you switch this, you would have three and four at the beginning, which is not what we want. Lastly, again, t is between zero and one. Good. So that's the second important parametrization. The third one will seem almost trivial, but I'll make an important point. How would we parametrize a function? So example three, I think the part of the parabola y equals x squared from 1, 1 to 2, 4. So what this means, we have the parabola y equals x squared. We start at 1, 1, and we end at 2, 4. 1, 1, and then 2, 4. And it's just this jump here. Which we want to parametrize with, again, this way, x of t, y of t. But what I'm trying to make the point of is functions are very easy to parametrize. Namely, the way you would do it, you would just let x of t to be t, and then y is what? Well, it's just x squared which here becomes t squared, because x is t. And lastly, t goes from what to what? Well, it just goes from one to one, one to two, because x is between one and two. What's the point? The point is, again, functions are very easy to parametrize. In particular, any function has a parametric equation. That's not a problem. Uh, However, parametric equations go beyond functions. Namely, there are a bunch of things that are not functions which do have parametric equations. For instance, the circle. We've seen that the circle can be parametrized with polar coordinates. On the other hand, the circle is not a function because it fails a vertical line test. So what I'm saying is it's a very powerful tool and this tool will allow us to integrate stuff that's not functions, namely integrate over more general curves, which is again the point of the next video. So if you like this and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.